Today, we're going to be covering how to create a detailed depreciation schedule. This is a very important skill set to have for any financial analyst position because every company capitalizes asset and requires you to have good understanding of the depreciation schedule. We're going to be studying this by solving a case study where we are provided a list of capital assets purchased by the company from 2020. We are provided the price, which is in US dollars, annual depreciation rate, the depreciation method, the useful period, acquisition date, which is when it was purchased, and then end date, which is the date that we expect the asset to become obsolete based on the useful period provided here. Using this information, we are going to create a depreciation schedule from scratch, building out the template all on our own. Some things to note here is that first, depreciation starts in the month of acquisition, so although the acquisition date is the last date of the month, depreciation will start within this month. The other point is that the last month of depreciation should reflect the book value of the asset rather than the calculated depreciation. So by the time we hit the last month of the useful period, we would just depreciate the entire remaining amount. And with these two points covered, let's now begin creating our depreciation schedule. We have to conduct our analysis on a monthly basis with a total row capturing the total depreciation amount for the month. So I know that my schedule has to be on a monthly basis. Before we actually start our analysis, let's actually convert our data set into a table by first highlighting the data, go to the insert, and then click on the table function. Press OK. Let's just reformat this. One more thing, let's just rename the table into list asset so that I could reference this more efficiently. So with building out our template, I actually want to start with setting up the month headers. And the way I'm going to do that first is use the min function. Based on the acquisition date, which will help me identify what the earliest period of acquisition date is so that we could start from there. I'm also going to format this into a three letter month abbreviation code and two digit year code. And I can see that the earliest date that we purchased our first asset was April 2020. From here, I'm going to use the end of month function to create subsequent headers for the future. And now we need to bring in our vertical headers. So we want to bring in the asset ID because we have to assess the depreciation per unique asset. We also want to bring in the price, depreciation rate, and pretty much all the data here. So let's just copy these headers. So we have to add some columns here, copy these headers, and let's copy the format as well. And to bring in my asset ID, I am going to use the unique function under the asset ID column in my table. So to bring in these fields, I'm going to X look up the asset ID. And this time, rather than just the column, because if you notice, the reference is the table name and the field name, where I have to manually adjust the field name anytime I want to change what I'm referencing, I'm instead just going to select all of column B and my return array where I want to bring in the price, I'm going to select all of column D. And when I close the formula, I will have price and I can just simply drag this across. One cool thing to note here is that because our reference is a spill, I can just add a hashtag where it will then factor in the entire spill range as my input. Let's do the same thing for all the other fields here as well. I'm going to take a shortcut. I'm going to press Control H, search for B7, and replace it with B7 hashtag. And when I replace the spill range applied to all my data set here. So this is our list of assets. And we can now begin setting up our depreciation schedule. And this is really where it gets complicated because I want to set up one formula that I can just drag and drop across all my different assets and then calculate my depreciation accurately. 
straight line is probably the easiest one where we can just calculate this by using if and the analysis date is greater or equal to the acquisition date and the analysis date is less than or equal to the end date I want to return the monthly depreciation amount which is price divided by the useful period otherwise zero and if I drag this across you will notice that depreciation starts in November which is the acquisition date and it should end in October and the total amount is seven hundred and seventy dollars now declining balance is a bit more tricky because we always have to calculate how much of the purchase price is still remaining as of the analysis date so let's set up if and analysis date is greater or equal to the acquisition date and analysis date is less than or equal to the end date here we want to calculate what the book value is of the asset so it would be the price minus sum of j7 to j7 notice how i locked the column for the starting point of the sum range so that when i drag this formula across to the right it will always start from j7 but it will always add all the depreciation that we've accumulated prior to the analysis date so this is essentially our principle and then for the interest rate we're just going to divide the annual rate divided by 12 otherwise zero and let's apply this across and we will have depreciation starting in november 2023 all the way up to october 33 over here however notice that the sum of the depreciation amount is only 119 when it should be 170. so we have to add something in the formula so that if it is the end date we want to subtract the entire remaining amount so we're going to set up another clause here so if these conditions are correct and if the analysis date equals the end date then we want to set a max between the amount that we've calculated just now or we want to calculate the difference between the price minus sum of j7 to j7 otherwise if it is not the last month it will just conduct this calculation out accordingly so one thing i noticed was we need to make sure we only lock the column for the first part of the range press enter and we can now see that the total is 170 which matches the price of the asset and if we look at how the depreciation schedule works it starts from a 10 percent within the first month and then you can see that the balance is gradually decreasing and then in the last month of service we write out the entire remaining amount of $51 and we now have a formula first for a straight line and one for declining balance so we can actually layer another function above where if the depreciation method equals declining balance then we wanted to conduct this calculation over here otherwise if e7 equals straight line let's just put a zero here for now and let's copy this formula and then over here we can replace the calculation to if and the period is what we're assessing so let's just move these references up above zero and zero so this would be the entire formula and if i drag this across and we just had let's add one more column here and let's call this total 
and let's just sum the entire amount. We just want to make sure that the calculated total matches the price. So this one starts in January 2023, ends in December 2032. So we can see that it starts. And then by the time it hits December 2032, we depreciate the full remaining amount of 15,000. And if we were to quickly check, the 120 divided by 12 is around 10 years, 54,080. We have a 13% annual depreciation. And it matches here. And if we were to do this 10 times, we have about 13,000 that we have to write off, which is pretty reasonable to the 14 or around 15,000 that we have here. There will be a slight difference between calculating the depreciation annually and monthly, because if you depreciate more frequently by using this monthly method, you will end up depreciating less because your balance actually drops faster. So let's copy this formula all the way to apply to all our assets. And then we can just have a check where we subtract the price by the initial purchase price. And you'll see some differences here because their end dates are significantly greater than what we've currently set out to be. But all the other ones where we factored in the periods, the depreciation has worked effectively. One more check here that we can set up is count, where we want to count ifs that are above zero. And we just want to make sure that the periods that we've recognized equals the useful period. And again, if we were to filter all the checks that are false, it's just because the end date is much greater than what we've set out in our schedule so far. And this is a useful way to create a detailed depreciation schedule that would factor in both the straight line calculations and also the declining balance calculations. And with this, we've created our depreciation schedule. I hope this video helped you gain insight to how to create an automated depreciation schedule and also how to analyze effectively using periods and dates. As you improve and get better with Excel, you will find yourself developing more complex formulas to automate a lot of the process. But I guarantee you this is a very fun thing to learn and it will feel very rewarding once you get good at it. This will be the last educational video for 2024. For the remaining periods, try to upload some side content. If you have any questions, always feel free to reach out and I will be uploading more educational videos in 2025. So I'll see you then and follow for more.